in a way that actually makes meaning that we can then carry forward. Because if I feel that I've got it right or I've got it wrong, where am I going to go with that? So it's, again, trying to understand different forms of standards of judgment by which we can make decisions as to whether or not we're getting closer to an inclusional way of being. Because it's not just how we run a workshop, it's because so it's part of our, what we're passionate about, I think is expressed through this. And this is what we're trying to do through our work, whether we're with, it, with our colleagues on, on Wednesday. Hopefully you can see whether or not they've not just been included, but whether we are able to work responsibly and effectively with them. And whether we're open, but also have a, a sense of what we're trying to do with as well. So it's to look at that idea. Benchmarks, I, I, as a psychologist, I find very difficult. I think what it means is we're being subjective um, on whether or not we are being included. I'm trying not to make judgments about your experiences because I've been trying to explore this further with you. So I'm trying to understand whether, how can I understand whether or not I'm being open to you? Whether or not you wish to actually engage with me, how can I understand your experience without even if I ask you? I'm trying to understand myself as well. So how do I am about this? How responsive can I be? Am I just defensive? Sometimes it might be appropriate. Is it? Can I just pull you back a little bit ahead with this gentleman's question? You said at the beginning you were responsible for developing the benchmark. So if you if if you find something in this research, how is it going to go from your eye, your way, to a benchmark standard in the local area authority? Sorry. How are you going to do that? Because a benchmark... In the, in the inclusion of quality marks. Yeah, inclusion of quality marks. Oh, okay. So a quality mark suggests there's a standard that's got to be used. So how, how do you say to a teacher who maybe doesn't like the inclusional ideas? That's very interesting, yes. Um, as I say, I'm leading off the Bath and North East Somerset inclusion quality mark. Okay, and as, a th as an authority, we are developing our own <coughs> criteria standards as to, to the schools which get the inclusion quality mark. What we look for when we go into schools, we, we are looking for this relationship that there is between the staff, okay, between the SMSAs, between the teachers, between the teachers' SMSAs, between the pupils, between the teachers, the pupils. We when we go into school, to school, we are looking for this flow of interaction between one and the other. We, and we feel it. When we talk to people, and I've, I've, I've got it in my paper, I was speaking with a teacher, and um, I was asking sort of various questions. And then he said to me, he said, do you know, he said, I'm really happy in my work. He said, but you're not here to hear that. I said, yes, that is exactly why I am here. I am here to find out why you were happy to work, please tell me about it. And from that, then he started telling me all the things that were going on in the schools with he and the pupils, he and the head teacher. And you could see this sort of flow that was just obvious within the school and then talking with other people in the school, the flow, the flow with the SMSAs, uh, with, with, their, uh, with their line managers and so on, how comfortable they feel within that space together. Right, but can, can I mean, the, the core of it for me is exactly that really. I mean we do have the inclusion quality mark and there's a checklist and do they have a policy yes. um, etc. Yes. But when you walk into schools and to some schools you actually feel that this is an inclusive yes. school. Yes. And how do you capture that? Mm -hmm. yeah, how do you capture that? And that there is this big gap between the checklist and this feeling of inclusiveness. Yes. And, and that, I think, is what you're, you're trying to do, Absolutely. isn't it? Is actually trying to somehow yeah. capture that. When you write it down, it doesn't come across the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that, that, that really clarifies for me what we're talking about in the, the difficulties of language. But in the inclusion quality mark, talking about inclusive practice, where um, Anne was talking about previously that there are various uh, ways that people are trying to collect information as to whether or not an environment is inclusive. What they're starting to move into, but I might have misunderstood. It's more of an inclusional understanding, which are the values that are also carried within that, which is to do with that, though that flow within the, the space. It's unfortunate that inclusion gets inclusive practice and inclusional practice, and these two, where the distinction is, I'm not sure, but there is, and I think there's confusions there. So I need to think about how to communicate that absolutely. 
just, if I could just go on from there and to clarify something that, that has been said here. Um, I know there are some authorities who ask for a portfolio, okay, regarding inclusion quality mark, their inclusion quality mark, and that's it. They just look at the portfolio and the school will have an inclusion quality mark that goes out of that. We feel it is really important for us to go into school and to be able to feel that and also to be able to feel those relationships. And I think that for us and for our authority, this is a big part of what we do. And very much about whether or not we are being inclusional. And I'm saying how she looks at her values. This isn't just something to go and look at other institutions. I think we've got time for one or two more questions. That's yeah, one well, very quick couple if it's two. I just wonder what happened, what do you do if you go into a school and you don't hear? Because <laughs> 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 I've been to schools and I have felt nothing like that at all. At all. How does that school then move from there to mm -hmm. right. So could I ask you, so you haven't felt that, so what is your understanding then of what's going on at that school? Could I ask you that? The mm -hmm. flow that you're talking yes. about between the staff, between the children and the staff and so on is not happening, it's clashing all the time and, and you can feel it. Yes. Well this is something that we work on, because what we do with, with the Bath and Office and the Inclusion Quality Mark, um, schools have mentors. Okay, which and they go in at the beginning of the process when the school has done um, their audit. And they do a questionnaire as well, which pupils have to fill in. Um, all staff, you know, SMSAs, teaching assistants, and so on. So we have a feel of what's going on, and then we actually go into the schools and we talk with all the people, a cross section of the school community. So at the beginning, we have a feeling of what's going on in that school, and then we can work with that school in highlighting the sort of things that we've talked about today. Also, I guess if you go in and do what you're doing now yes. with a school, you're obviously living out your values yes. and inclusion. Yes. And I sense that. Yes. I really feel this is a success for you from my point of view, because I feel your values around inclusion, and that's going to rub off on me. So I guess if you go into a school like the ones you've been talking about and you actually do what you've done with us today, mm. I think people get the, will get the sense of what does inclusion as a value look like on the ground. Yes. And maybe that will begin to love off. Because yes. it is very much then that, that, for instance, the, the connections between going into the schools mm. on a Wednesday morning, um, before we came yesterday, we had a, uh, was a little group in the uh, local authority, some of my colleagues from different departments, meeting for a conversation cafe, where we're trying to explore mm -hmm. what you're saying about walking the talk, actually how, how we understand it and trying to extend our understandings of our living values through a living theory research approach. And it's fun. It's like on a Tuesday night when she had a group of teachers working with uh, Jack Whitehead up at Bath University, exploring the same sort of things. And for, for me, it was really exciting when they were with the flow and one of the um, uh, behaviour support teachers we work with said to us, uh, oh, she went into a school and she was really excited about what was going on. And we found the teacher was coming along to the Tuesday group and her head was coming along to, we've got a, a little group, very small groups of, of heads who are going, who are going from that point where they want to actually start to explore. So it's not just uh, imposing one, but how are we living those values and how are we engaging with people? It's space, isn't it? It's yes. actually moving away from benchmarks and checklists. It's space. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.